Good morning once more viewers and welcome to Impact on Africa. Today we have another presentation we will be giving you and I'd like you to pay attention to this presentation. One way or the other it might help you, help somebody you know. But before you do that, please click on your subscription button and share so that others can benefit from what you are about to benefit from now. Thank you. Yes, today we will have, uh, the presentation of today is about, it's about fever, malaria and fever, what we call malaria fever. You know, malaria, Today our presentation is going to be about malaria fever. You know, malaria still remains one of the highest killing diseases in the world today. And the fever that comes with malaria is also a problem to many of us. One, just getting rid of temperatures. When a child has malaria or typhoid fever, any form of fever, getting rid of a temperature becomes a serious problem. And to a certain extent, since the malaria, malaria parasite begins to evolve and begins to de develop a lot of resistance to modern conventional drugs, we have found it necessary to return back to the old practices of using our natural herbs to treat malaria. And I think, I think and I believe very strongly that is the best way to handle malaria. Today I'll be introducing you a series of leaves, common leaves, things that you know, things that you, you, you see day to day, you touch on a day to day basis, but you don't know how they can help you. But I'm assuring you that those things will come a long way to getting rid of malaria at its early stages. Remember, I'm talking about its early stages because I've not yet proven it, how much it can get rid of malaria in, a, in, a, in an advanced stage. But I know at the early stage of malaria, it can get rid of it. And if you are constantly using it, you might not even have malaria before it gets to, into its early stages. So I'll be introducing them one after the other. This is the purple leaf. I know a lot of people call it karika papaya. I don't know what it, whether, whether it's, what it means, but I know it's called popo. It's a fruit. These are the leaves. But there are two kinds of popos. You have the male and the female. The female is the one we, we eat every day in our markets. We see every day in our market. That the best fruits around our compounds. But there's another one, the male. The male produces this flower. The male produces this flower. This is the popo leaf and this is the flower of the male popo. If you see how the, the male popo does, it removes this flower. The flower comes out and then the popo bears on it. Like it has a long rope coming from the popo tree. That is the male popo. It is known to be more medicinal, more potent in terms of medicine. So we recommend it more than the female own for, for the treatment of malaria. That is the first one. You have this. I'm sure people, a lot of people know it. It's called masopo. I don't know what it's called, what the scientific name for it. I don't know the, the English name for it. I know it by a local palance called masopo. It is known in many cultures. It's used as a spice. It's used as medicine. It's very good. It's medicinal. It does cleansing. It does detoxification and all forms of other cleaning. In this case, it's going to be one of the things we are using against malaria. The third one, you know these leaves. This is the mango tree. This one is not yet a tree in any way, but it is the mango. It represents the mango tree. It is better when it's the, the no, there's a certain mango they call number five or number four. Those tradi bush mangoes, they call it bush mango. The leaves are more potent in terms of medicinal property. It is also one of the ingredients that are good for the preparation of this malaria solution. The third one is the guava tree. I'm sure you know the guava tree. There's nobody who doesn't know guava. I don't think there's another name for guava. It is guava. In French, it's guava -y. But in English, it's guava. I don't know how it's called. In my village, they call it for tam tam. But <laughs> I know many people don't know that name. But in English, it's called the guava and the guava tree. So this is also one of the ingredients that is good for malaria, the treatment of malaria. Not as an independent plant, but as a combination to the other plants that we'll be combining today. There's another one. I'm sure all of you know this one. Called the fever grass. It's called fever grass. A lot of people know it. A lot of people know it. It's good, also good for high fever in children and adults. And it's good for, for malaria when combined with these other herbs. Remember what I said. It is good for fever. As I was saying earlier, this is a fever grass. It is good fevers. It helps to bring down temperatures and to get rid of unwanted fevers. But also, when you combine it to this, it becomes very good for malaria. You also have the mint. Which I which I've introduced in, in similar in a similar uh, uh, video. The mint you attach it to it. You attach it to it. You also attach you also attach this plant to it. In I have counted one, two, the mint two, the fever grass three, the mango leaf four, the guava leaf five, and the popo leaf. Did I count the pear leaf? The pear leaf seven. These are seven plants. Masopo being the eighth plant, a combination of this and a, 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 a tuber or two of aloe vera. I'm sure we all know what aloe vera is. You put it in a pot, you boil it, boil it for about an hour. When you boil it, make sure the pot is full of these leaves. When you boil it, you will open the pot, you have the patient put his head over the pot and you cover him with a blanket. When you cover him with a blanket, you stir the pot, the vapor comes out. He inhales, he inhales the vapor through his mouth and through his nostrils until he begins to sweat. You don't hurry to get him out of that pot. Let him sweat, let him sweat, let him sweat. 
When you remove the blanket, you remove the concoction that is found in that pot. And the patient drinks that concoction. He can drink that concoction for two, three days. I'm assuring you, malaria will be gone. When it comes to things like typhoid fever, fever, it becomes more complicated because typhoid fever entails needs more antibiotics. Many more antibiotics because it's a completely different form of infection. So typhoid fever needs a lot of antibiotics. But as far as malaria is concerned, this one does the trick. As I repeated, I said at the beginning of the program, it is at the initial stages of malaria. I have not proven whether it can work when malaria has, has a firm grip over so But I know that it can reduce the impact. But I'm not yet certain of how much it can treat if the malaria is already acute. Subscribe, as I said, and share so that others can benefit from the things that we are introducing to you on this program. God bless you.